All right. So tell me what if I give you this series of uh, curves and I ask you to please make some uh, observations. What are some of the observations that you would that you could make? Um, okay. All right. Excellent. Um, Uh, several of you are making some uh, predictions here. Stephen says, uh, um, when the stress, the highest stress, the highest stress occurs where the strain is 0 0.002. And Ryan uh, says the same thing in a different way. Uh, strain peaks around 0 0.002. So when the, well, actually, stress peaks uh, where strain is 0 0.002. That's excellent. So uh, let's, let's, uh, let's uh, summarize that. So uh, with this family of curves, and this is true with all concretes, basically, when the strain is 0 0.002, uh, we assume that the concrete achieves its highest stress. All right. Now, what else? What else can we um, tell me? What about what can you tell me about point zero zero three? And remember, the x component here is strain. All right, strain. An axial strain last week we defined as delta L over L. So, when strain is point zero zero three, what observation would you make? Okay, um, Stephen says uh, uh, rupture occurs, uh, and, and Donald says the same thing. Um, yes, F Helen says failure, that's co correct, and, and Ian says, uh, well, 0 .003 strain is uh, when, we, when we assume that uh, failure occurs. That's basically what uh, many of you have been saying. Now, let's see if, if you agree with that. Basically, if you draw a line like this, we're saying when strain is 0 .003, uh, concrete ruptures. Well, guys, that is true, certainly true when, uh, for the, the top two curves, when 6,000 PSI and 5,000 PSI. Because think about it, right in this region, that's where the concrete uh, the, the curve stops and the concrete fails. That is not so true with the 3,000, 4,000, 1,000, and 2,000 uh, PSI concrete. However, however, I will tell you, it is a uh, conservative assumption for those other concretes. Therefore, ACI, American Concrete Institute, uh, makes that assumption in uh, in the, in the design equations, all right? So we are going to use these principles we've talked about. We are going to assume concrete is going to fail when the strain reaches 0 0.003. Slide number seven uh, pretty much uh, discusses and tells you what I just told you about the previous slide. So please read this. Um, now, here we're talking about the modulus of elasticity for uh, concrete. Remember I told you earlier that uh, because uh, concrete is indeed a, a brittle material, it really doesn't have a linear portion. The stress-strain curve does not. So we have an option of four or five different ways of calculating the modulus of elasticity. However, however for design purposes, ACI, again, American Concrete Institute, they, they specify and use the kind of modulus that I showed to you that's called tangent modulus. So they, they actually just use one in the design equations, and that is the, the slope of the tangent line drawn to the stress-strength curve at the point where the stress is 0.5 F prime C. And again, F prime C is the design compressive strength. So 
at the 0.5 times f prime c. On the curve, we draw a line that's tangent to the curve, and we calculate the slope of that line. You don't really need to actually calculate it because, um, again, ACI uses this equation to give us that value. So um, this is what we need to do. You, uh, what you need to do is please learn this equation here. E, modulus of elasticity for concrete, is equal to the following equation. 33 times the square root of F prime C times W to the power of 1.5. W, guys, you need to understand what W is. W is the, uh, the unit weight. W is the unit weight of concrete. All right? So you substitute the unit weight of the concrete in that equation. You substitute the value of F prime C, compressive, design compressive strength in that equation, and this will give you the modulus of elasticity for that particular concrete. All right? Now, this, this equation uh, applies for concretes that have unit weight somewhere between 90 PCF. That's pounds per cubic feet. So 90 to 155 pounds per cubic feet. All right? Now, most concretes have a, a, a uh, normal, standard uh, concrete. Uh, we call it normal weight concrete. Has a compressive strength. I'm sorry, not the compressive strength. I meant to say unit weight. A normal weight concrete has a unit weight somewhere between 155 and 145 PCF. All right? So I'll, uh, you need to write this down because there will be uh, opportunities for you to use this. All right? Uh, normal weight concrete has unit weight somewhere between 145 to 155 PCF, pounds per cubic uh, feet. Now, Assuming P, uh, 145 PCF, ACI has come up with this equation here. So you substitute, or they substituted 145 for W in that uh, top equation, and then they reduced it to this thing. And this equation you may have an opportunity to use on the test, all right? Uh, it's, the modulus of elasticity is 57,000 times the square root of F prime C. So F prime C, compressive strength, will be given to you, all you have to do is just substitute in this equation, you calculate the modules of elasticity. All right. Um, in just a few minutes, I'm going to bring all of these different topics that we are talking about, bringing it all together, and show you how we can use it. Uh, Joseph, I think I told you what W is. If you still have a problem, let me know. Uh, uh, Jeremy, no, unit weight of concrete. He's asking if the unit weight is, includes steel or not. Uh, no, it does not. That's, that's the unit weight of the concrete itself. Uh, And Joseph says also sometimes gamma is used uh, for unit weight. Yes, you're correct. Uh, w or gamma is used, uh, that's for unit weight. But gamma is usually used for, for uh, soil, and uh, for concrete, customary to use W. All right. Uh, Laura is asking, is, uh, is uh, F prime C in PSI? Um, I uh, think it it is in that in that equation. Um, no, Tyler, no. Okay, now at this point we're looking at slide number nine, and uh, uh, I want to tell you a story at this time. I want to tell you about a uh, uh, the story of a typical concrete beam, the life of a typical concrete beam. Um, and uh, let's assume um, there is a, uh, a concrete truck 
delivered delivering uh, concrete in in its plastic form uh, uh, flowable form into a, uh, a job site and then we we actually deposit this concrete let's say into a uh, form that would give the shape of a beam a typical beam let's say with a uh, rectangular cross section all right just if you can imagine it's a typical uh, concrete beam it could be part of a structure a parking garage or whatever that uh, it is a member of this concrete beam actually throughout its service life goes through three different stages so there are three stages of life for this concrete beam and I will tell you the story starting from the first day, first few hours of its life. And that stage is called uncracked. So when we actually place this plastic concrete, flowable concrete in the form, and it assumes its shape, well, we go through the process of curing the concrete, but we don't really, we don't place loads on it. We very gradually start placing load on this beam. And the very first stage of its life is uncracked. There are no cracks anywhere in this beam. And finally, there, time, there comes a moment and this is moment in terms of force moment that the first crack occurs on the tension side of this beam. And that is the very first crack that is developed, that is the end of the first stage of the life of that concrete beam. It's no longer uncracked. And when that happens, stage the second stage of its life begins and that we refer to as cracked elastic stage so there are cracks within this beam on the tension side in general but the behavior is elastic so we call that cracked elastic then when it gets through that stage then part C the third stage, which is called ultimate strength stage, begins. Guys, for the purposes of this presentation today and what you need to worry about on the test, especially in the morning, we only need to cons consider the, the first two stages. And that is what we will be talking about today. So the uncracked stage and cracked elastic stage. Each one is governed by certain equations, and we will go over that. By the way, the uncracked, sec, uh, the uncracked stage could last anywhere from a few weeks to a few months, depending on the, the, the concrete mixture and the loading and the structure itself. All right? And then the second stage, cracked elastic stage, uh, can last for many, many, many years. All right, let's uh, move on. Um, here, remember uh, early on I told you to please write down a series of terms, and we, throughout the presentation we're going to learn what they are and how to calculate it. Sure you remember. What was the first term? Yeah, just go back to the first uh, page where you wrote, the, wrote it down. Yeah, C cracking moment. That's right. That's right. Um, I can just hear Helen said cracking moment. So uh, it's, it's cracking moment. And guys, I'm going to show you how to calculate this because this is a rather simple uh, concept, but it can be on the test. And basically, remember I told you the first uh, stage is uncracked? Well, when the moment diagram, and this is the moment diagram, look at it. This, the moment diagram that I showed you last week, how to calculate it, for the values that are equal to the 